800 million people altogether uh, do not know where the next meal is coming from. 75% of the people we're talking about are in rural areas. Take any place on the planet that was once extremely poor and is now either developed or on its way to becoming a developed economy. You'll find uh, almost inevitably an agricultural revolution at the start of that, a big rise in productivity in the amount of food grown per hectare uh, of land. I don't know of any country which developed without using science and technology. If we don't apply science to solve poor people's problems, we're going to end up with scientific apartheid, meaning science is for us, the non-poor, and for the poor, science is too complicated, too sophisticated. That is not true. But to a considerable extent, that is what's happening today. Tout le monde, toutes les autres couches de la société peuvent profiter. Everybody, all the other levels of society are able to profit from good technologies that they think help them get ahead in life. And the farmer is the one they keep working at the hardest job of all. And he can't use a single technological means to increase his income and reduce his difficulty. We apply science to solve our problems. We apply genetic engineering to solve our health problems. We use it in human medicine because we get sick. In developing countries, the big public health problem is hunger and malnutrition. So they need to apply whatever tools are available to solve those problems. It is incumbent on our governments and on our scientists to bring a technology which can address a small-scale farmer. What they typically require is a kind of an empowering tool uh, which allows them to reduce the uncertainties, get greater incomes, and also to be able to invest more in their own households as well as on the farm. Uh, what uh, the biotechnology enables them is precisely this. Here's a technology that is not only scale neutral, but delivers more benefits to the poor. For example, in the US, you would expect, on average, to increase productivity by 5%. If you use BT maize in the Philippines, that increase is 40%. The uh, technology has made a difference in the lives of you know, uh, corn farmers uh, who have used the technology small uh, corn farmers earning 60% more income, impacting positively the quality of life of, of many of these uh, uh, small farmers, many of whom you know, have an average of uh, uh, only one hectare. You know, a, a 24 row combine harvester uh, requires a big farm, but the transgenic seed uh, doesn't really have the same characteristics. The technological advantages of uh, transgenic crops are contained in the seed. Getting those technologies to the poorest farmers is absolutely one of the keys to making the breakthrough out of extreme poverty. It can really mean a difference, all the difference, yeah, in the life of many resource poor farmers. So not only do you get the material benefits from this technology, but the humanitarian benefits. And I believe at the end of the day, the humanitarian benefits will be much more important, relatively speaking, if in fact we want to live in a just society tomorrow.